All right, guys, I've been trying to make this video for a little while now and haven't really been able to get it uh, all put down in less than 20 minutes, which I think is way too long to try to hold anybody's attention for what I'm trying to show you here. So I'm just going to really try to consolidate everything down and just really give you the bare meat and potatoes on this project. And uh, if you've got any questions, leave them below. I'll try to answer them. Uh, but I do encourage you to uh, continue your research. You know, look elsewhere, read up on this, see what other guys have done. And uh, make sure you know what you're doing if you're going to attempt this modification as well. But what I've done here, I've modified my 60-gallon upright shop compressor uh, to dramatically reduce the amount of moisture I've been seeing in both my tank, my lines, as well as my tools uh, as kind of a subsequent consequence. I've uh, just really been having a problem with that, especially if I'm running air heavy tools that has this compressor running for long periods of time. Uh, when that hot air starts mixing with the cooler air in the tank and in the lines, uh, it just really oversaturates everything. And I was getting a ton of water uh, through my lines and through my tools, uh, which was really making a mess. So I did this modification. Uh, the difference has actually been night and day. Uh, it's pretty much completely solved the issues I was having. And based on my research and my experience here, I might even go as far as to saying this is about uh, the quickest, cheapest, and easiest modification that you can make, or in other words, the biggest bang for your buck if you're trying to dry your air out on your air compressor and in your tools. Now, a couple of caveats here. Uh, one, this is not going to completely eliminate moisture in your air compressor. Uh, there's really no way to do this, uh, but still there's even better ways to do that. Uh, they just cost more, and basically I'm just talking about dedicated air dryers. Uh, you've got desiccant systems, desiccant filters. Uh, you've got other types of water traps and water separators uh, that you can put together. And you may even want to add those, you know, in addition to something like this. Uh, but at the end of the day, they're more complicated. Uh, and more often than not, they're going to cost more as well. Uh, for this modification, you can easily get it all done. Uh, probably within half an hour to an hour of work. And uh, for right around $150, potentially even less. So I think that's pretty hard to beat, especially for the results I'm getting. And uh, that's kind of why I want to show this to you guys. Uh, now I'll also add one more disclaimer, you know, do this at your own risk. Uh, you're modifying a machine in a way that it was not designed. Uh, you're dealing with high pressures, high temperatures, moving parts, you know, work smart. Uh, again, do your research, make sure you know what you're doing before you do it. Uh, use the right parts, parts that are rated for high temperature and high pressures. And you should be all right. Just understand, uh, you may be ultimately damaging your machine if you do something wrong. And worst case, you could hurt yourself. So I don't want that to happen to anybody. And I can't really be held responsible for that. But, you know, don't take this as the final gospel for anything I'm about to show you. Uh, it's not necessarily the best way. It may not even be the right way. Uh, but do some extra research and make sure you're comfortable in doing what you're about to do before you do it. Now, all that being said, uh, let me just jump into it. Uh, the long of the short of it is, uh, basically I'm just adding a cooler in between the compressor head and the tank. And to quickly explain, the main reason you're gonna get moisture in your lines is from hot air mixing with cool air. Uh, compressor heads create hot air, you know, anywhere from three to in excess of 400 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it's going to mix with room temperature air. When that happens, the moisture in that air starts condensing, uh, and that's where you get the water vapor and the saturation in your lines. So a way to fix that is to cool the air before it gets to the tank. And the easiest way to do that, in my opinion, is to add a cooler in between that head and that tank. So normally you would just have a single transfer tube going from the head uh, down through the check valve, which is that silver hex fitting there, or aluminum hex fitting. And uh, instead of that, we're basically taking that out of the equation and adding a cooler in between that 
Now, the type of cooler I decided to use is a transmission oil cooler originally designed for automobiles. And I'll try to eventually add some links to the various parts and pieces here. Uh, but the cooler I'm using is a Durali <clears throat> 15300. Uh, there's some additional info, dimensions, part number. Uh, you can get these for about $50 to $60. And I've seen a lot of guys uh, using these. They seem to work pretty well. Uh, so that's what I went with. Uh, now, it's got Dash 8. AN or Army Navy fittings. Uh, those are equivalent to half inch fittings. Now, uh, a quick note on Army Navy fittings. They've got kind of a unique uh, flare angle of about 37 degrees. Uh, and they're pretty much dimensionally identical to what's known as a JIC fitting. Uh, I don't quite recall what that stands for at the moment. Uh, but the dimensions are pretty much interchangeable. Uh, it's just the sizing uh, that kind of throws you off. Uh, for AN fittings, normally there's a dash with a number after it. Uh, that number normally represents the number of sixteenths of an inch wide or the diameter of that fitting. So for instance, a dash eight like we're seeing here is eight sixteenths of an inch or one half of an inch. Uh, JIC fittings normally just use a fractional designation, so quarter, three eighths, half inch. So a half inch JIC or a dash eight AN, uh, they're pretty much interchangeable. Uh, if I recall right, the JIC fittings just have a slightly uh, lower machining tolerance, uh, but for all intents and purposes and for these applications, uh, one will fit the other. So I'll use those kind of interchangeably as I go through how I piped this in. Uh, but what I did, where there was originally just a 3 8 transfer tube, a 3 8 outer diameter tube uh, with a compression fitting on each end to tie this head to the tank, uh, I took that out and I replaced the nipple that that transfer tube originally went into, uh, which I used to have up here, but it was a quarter inch NPT a 3 8 compression fitting nipple. Uh, I swapped that out for a quarter inch NPT to dash 8 AN uh, male flare nipple. And then to uh, screw into that and to attach this copper tube, uh, I've got a half inch JIC compression fitting with a compression sleeve. And uh, I'll show you a little bit better view of that in a minute. Uh, but that goes to a half inch soft copper tube and uh, you can get that at your local big box store, 12 or $15 for 10 feet of the stuff, uh, which will be more than enough for this project. And, uh, you know, it bends easily. It holds up to the temperature, holds up to the pressure, and it'll work just fine. Uh, but you do have to uh, flare the ends of it uh, after you put these fittings on, or it'll just pull right out of these compression sleeves. And I'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. Uh, so you got the little adapter nipple here, uh, goes to the compression fitting. You've got a half inch tube coming around to this cooler core, uh, another half inch JIC compression fitting to the dash eight AN fittings that came with this cooler core. Now you've got one top and bottom. Uh, now, uh, this is the hot side. You definitely want that to be, again, something that'll hold up to the temperature and the pressure. Uh, this soft copper tubing is gonna be your cheapest option. Uh, now on the bottom, I do have a braided hose. This is a high pressure, high temperature uh, fuel or oil line for race cars and such. Uh, I only use this because I already had it and it was a little bit easier than making multiple bins in that copper tubing. Uh, again, I've got more than enough copper coil you can use that just as easily. You just want to get a couple more of the JIC compression fittings. Uh, but this hose had uh, female swivel fitting on either ends. Uh, again, dash eight AN. Uh, they'll swivel until tight. Uh, and then the other end just goes straight down into the tank uh, with another adapter. This is a dash eight AN male flare fitting to a three eighths compression sleeve fitting. And then you've got a 3 8 OD tube and another 3 8 compression fitting for this compressor. Now, obviously other compressors may be slightly different. 
Uh, but what I did here, I just cut the bottom of the original transfer tube off. Uh, now, ideally, I would have saved the whole tube uh, just to kind of have on hand if I want to put this all back to spec. Uh, and then I would have just got a little straight piece of 3 8 tube and one additional compression fitting. Uh, but I didn't really have the foresight to do that at first, and I just used what I had. So uh, that's how I tied everything together. And that's basically it. Uh, now I do also have a box fan here. If I'm gonna be running this for a couple of hours, I like to have some additional cooling. Uh, now there is gonna be airflow through this belt shroud from the flywheel, and that's really enough to keep this thing working. Uh, but the head, the motor, uh, the tubes, the cooler, they all do get pretty hot still. Although I haven't found that the air really warms up beyond uh, much beyond air temperature uh, at these fittings. Uh, but a little extra airflow is never a bad thing. So I went ahead and hung a box fan in front of it uh, just as a precaution and just to kind of help things out. So that's really it. Uh, once again, I've seen a night and day difference here uh, where I was getting just almost a deluge of water in my lines. Uh, that's pretty much all gone away. Uh, my Vortex cooler, it was freezing up from the water in the lines. Uh, it hasn't had any issues. I've ran it for several hours at a time with no problem. Uh, now, I do still occasionally drain the bottom of the tank and this water separator. You're still going to get a little bit of water, but it is dramatically reduced. And very little, if any, of that uh, really makes it through the lines. And what does is nowhere near enough to cause any issues. Or certainly it's no worse than what you'd normally see, you know, just running some lightweight tools occasionally on something like this. So it definitely did the trick. Uh, I highly recommend it. Uh, now I will give one additional note, uh, again, about these compression sleeves for the JIC fittings. Uh, this is kind of what they look like. I got these from McMaster. Uh, they've got that 37 degree flare on one end. Uh, the square end here goes over your tubing. Uh, and then you've got the compression nut that fits over everything. Uh, now, most compression fittings, when you tighten them down, will kind of crimp that ferrule onto your tubing. Uh, that's really not the case with these. So you're actually going to need to also flare the ends of your copper. So put these on first, and then you can use uh, even just a regular 45 degree flaring tool to flare the very end there. And uh, even though that's not 37 degrees, uh, it still crimps on there nice and airtight and uh, keeps that copper tube from yanking out of there or blowing off. So you still get a really nice fit and uh, that degree difference really doesn't cause an issue. Now, if you've got a 37 degree flaring tool, use it. Uh, but if you don't have either kind of tool, uh, these are usually a little bit cheaper. They're about 11 or $12 at your big box store and uh, certainly get the job done. So uh, that's basically it, guys. Uh, again, you can use other air drying methods in addition to this uh, if you feel the need to or end up you know, still seeing some issues. Uh, but as far as my compressor and what I've been seeing, uh, this is pretty much taking care of my issues. And uh, all for, you know, maybe less than an hour's worth of work and about $150. So take it for what it's worth. Again, uh, do some more research, see if this will fit your needs. Uh, but if you do go this route, again, I'll try to include some links to parts that I used below for my compressor. Again, fitting sizes might be slightly different uh, based on what kind of model and make compressor you've got. Uh, but the concept should work for just about any of them. So uh, look into it. Think about it. I'll include the links below. Uh, try to help you guys out uh, if you've got one similar to mine. And, uh, you know, see what you think. Uh, again, be safe. Be careful. Do your research. And we're going to keep this at under 15 minutes. So uh, that's all I'm going to say about that. Thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you on the next one.